What's up everyone? My name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of MyInvestingClub.com. If you are brand new to trading or are curious about trading at all, I want to let you guys know about a free two-hour mentorship course that I put together with my mentor, Bao. It is available at MyInvestingClub.co. The link is going to be right here. This is a free webinar with limited seating every week, so please click on the link and reserve your spot before the time runs out. Also, a special bonus for all of our viewers on YouTube. So if you guys have any questions about MIC or you're curious about joining or uh, you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you. Uh, you can now text Tosh, who is one of our head mentors and head moderators at MIC, and he'll answer any questions you have about MIC. His phone number will be in the link in the description, and it'll also be right here. Thank you guys for watching, and enjoy the video. This is going to be a topic that I really like. You know, this is something that you always kind of know, talk, know and talk about and hear about when you first start, but I want to kind of get into the the kind of specifics of self-fulfillment. If this is your first webinar, welcome. Um, just gonna go through the classic stuff today. Um, gonna go over the key traders of the week. Typically, I only talk about the ones that I've traded. There, there were a couple stocks that moved that I didn't trade, but we can talk about them too. So we'll talk about the key traders of the week. We'll talk about the market sentiment, where I think we're at, where I think we were, where I think we're going, You know how I plan on trading next week. The question and answer is at the end, but you can always ask a question and I'll scroll up at the end and make sure that I don't miss any. I'll try to answer it if it's pertinent to what we're talking about. All right, uh, without further ado, let's get started. So BRN happened um, in the beginning of the week. And this is, I think, if, if there's one, if there's one setup that's prop that, that like MIC is kind of famous for, it's definitely one that Alex is famous for and Tosh. Actually, it's not famous. Like Bao doesn't really do this one very much. He does, but this is more of a Alex and Tosh pattern and I and you'll see me do it too but definitely like this is all Alex does and this is all Tosh does like literally every single day this is all they trade if I had to coin one setup as like an MIC setup it's this one so if there's one uh if there's one the point is is that on these morning gappers these morning movers the stocks, you know, like let them find a top. Don't try to catch the top. Wait for the top to come in and then you short the pop after the pop. Like you'll like, I, I guarantee you can find Alex talking about this every single day. Right. And so if like a lot of people probably looking at this chart being like, well, how do you know where the top is? Right. Like the, the, the true answer is you don't know where the top is, but I mean, literally like it's all, it's always going to be focused around a line. It's either going to be like a whole or half dollar or it, it's it's where candles typically popped up like you know any kind of lower high you know when this kind of happens it's just spiking up the top happened there's a couple candles up here and it stopped up here that immediately tells you this is where the support it or where there is some form of resistance people feel, feel like they want to short it people feel like they want to short it right there right so there's definitely some kind of wall right here so it trades for a couple more minutes and i say well i'm gonna you know how do I know it's not just going to, it could just do that like three, four, five, six more times, you know? So I'll put my order up there and, you know, it's just like, sometimes I like to go a little under the line, a little over the line that, that sometimes just varies kind of play to play. If I want to go a little over or a little under, you know, it's just, it's just preference. I, I could have put it at 225 exactly. I think I put 227 on this one or something. Normally when I go a little bit over, a little bit over the line, then what, what that typically tends to say is it, it typically reveals what I think about who's trading. If like, if I feel that just it, if I feel that it's literally just a bunch of chat room traders or it's just, you know, people who random, you know, who just chased it up, bought or chased it or people who are just shorting because of, if basically if I think it's really inexperienced traders trading it and I kind of get that vibe based on how like, how it's trading. If I, if you see me put an order right above a line, it's typically because I'm expecting them to, I, I'm expecting the, the move to pop up stuff, just get all the covers out, just get all of the weak shorts covers, get, or get some emotional chase longs who thought about buying your view up, but oh no, we just popped up too. I better get in now while I still can. Taking advantage of all that FOMO and I wanna be like right above where that where that level is. That's kind of how I can kind of guess the top on some of these. But that's normally what that means is if I'm shorting right above a line, that's typically why. Now, and on the flip side, if I'm shorting a little bit under the line, typically the reason for that is I, I still want to short the line. I might think there's bigger players in there that, you know, might not let it get higher. There's, you know, a, a big wall up there that, you know, I want to kind of front run. And you'll see Alex talking about that too. Like, 
you know, he, he saw a whole bunch of sellers and he front ran them. You know, he wanted to make sure he get in. And so that's normally, I, like, very rarely do I ever actually have 225, like, in this situation. Like, I'm normally a little under or a little over. But anyway, so it's right at the line. And the rule of thumb for me is if there's big potential for, like, a big potential stuff. Like, I mean, like, let's say this can stuff and it can stuff, like, 50 cents like stuff 50 cents to a dollar or something like that or 30 cents like in, you know it's, it's really elevated and it's or it's, it's elevated it's a somewhat thin name it's like a chat room pump or something you know anything along that kind of lines if there's big potential stuff and i see a big potential reward i don't get picky with the price normally you know like i'll just get in like if it pops up i'll just hotkey that shit in because i want to get in on the pop and i want to make sure that i get in now sometimes like often and and i i started doing this because when there's big potential sometimes i would get picky with the price and like like i would be there at like 227 and it would just like pop up to like 222 223 224 5 and then like stuff so massively and I was sitting there two cents higher and I totally missed the entire move. And I'm okay with missing the move as long as it's not like a huge move and I missed by two cents, right? So I, I, I learned from my mistakes there. And so that's when I typically like to start early on a feeler and then I'll even add on the pop. But when there's not big potential, I do what I did on this one. And you, I'm sorry, you can't really see because it happened in the same minute, but BRN, I actually started on the stuff candle and once it's stuff, I added under two, under 213. On this one, I remember I shorted up here first and then added. This is not a feeler and then add on the pop. You can tell because I covered everything right there. If I was expecting a big move, like based on what I just said, you know, if this was a feeler and that was an ad, my covers would be down here, right? Or like I would want to cover down there. So anyway, so that's just a rule. That's just an additional rule of thumb for me on this setup. It's like, I typically, it's typically right at around the line. I, I like, I, I don't go full size into the, into the first push because there's a chance it could just rip to 250. Like, I don't want to, like, I just don't want to jump in front of the train that often on such full size like that. So normally I go in like half or a third even, and then I'll add the rest of the size once it stuffs, which I did here. I stuffed it once it stuffed back under BY. Um, what's my A plus short? Uh, overextended trend breaks are my favorite short, just because they're typically, I don't know, they're just the most fun. My favorite, sh my A plus short is the death camel short. Like stock tanks, pops up, short it, get that secondary push, pull back. Uh, first resistance really good too. Uh, thing is, first resistance is really good if you're willing to scalp it. If you're willing to scalp it, first resistance is really good. First resistance into being the top, I, I, I think that's less probability. I think oftentimes stocks go to the first resistance area, pull back, reject, get the scalp, and then you know they can come back and break. But death candle short to pop, I love that setup. My cover didn't get filled at 152 when it hit 151, white circle. In that situation, what do you do? You just get out a little higher immediately because that, absolutely, yeah. If that happens, I get out. If that happens, I get out. Because basically the stock did what you want. And if it's basically, put it this way, no big order got filled and you didn't. Like it, it so every now and then that happens. Like it, you know, like it just one market maker filled. Sometimes it can also be an error. Like one market maker sometimes fills themselves at the same price. So it looks like someone else got a fill lower and you didn't, but it was just like them filling themselves. It doesn't happen very often, but I think that can happen. So like, um, I, I wouldn't like start being like, that doesn't happen very often, bro. All right. I'm tired guys. Thanks, Joey. Thanks, Brandon. You guys all rock that, that come here. Thanks. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, JDK. Thanks, Sunny. Flash. Everybody. Dude, it's always the same people too. These are the people who win. All right, guys. See you later. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.